Have you ever wondered what the end of the world would look like according to different faiths? This question has intrigued thinkers and believers alike for millennia. The concept of the end times holds a significant place in various religious philosophies. It's viewed as a final chapter, a decisive event, or a transformative era. These interpretations are as diverse as the faiths themselves, leading to a rich tapestry of theological debates. Today we delve into the fascinating world of theological debates on the end times. First we turn to Christianity, a faith with a rich narrative of the end times. Christianity paints a vivid picture of the end times, a narrative largely defined by the contents of the book of Revelation, the last book in the Christian Bible. This apocalyptic text is filled with prophecies and symbols, depicting scenes of cosmic battle, divine judgment, and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. The heart of this narrative revolves around the second coming of Christ, an event anticipated with both hope and awe. Christians believe that Jesus Christ, who once walked this earth 2,000 years ago, will return in glory. This is not a mere spiritual return, but a physical one where every eye shall see him. It's a moment of reunion, a promise of redemption, and a time of reckoning. Yet the second coming isn't the final act in the Christian eschatological drama. This event ushers in the period of the final judgment. It's believed that all souls, both the living and the dead, will stand before the throne of God. Every deed, every word, every thought will be laid bare, and God, in his divine wisdom and justice, will pass judgment. For the righteous, it's a moment of vindication, the promise of eternal life in God's presence. For the wicked, it's a moment of retribution, the dread of eternal separation from God. This is a time when justice long awaited is finally served. Yet amidst these dramatic scenes, there's also a thread of hope and renewal. The old order of things will pass away, and a new heaven and a new earth will emerge, free from sorrow, pain, and death. It's a vision of a world restored, a creation renewed, a paradise regained. The Christian perspective of the end times, therefore, is a complex tapestry of judgment and mercy of endings and beginnings, of desolation and restoration. It's a narrative that speaks of divine intervention in human affairs, of God stepping into history to set things right. Here we see a belief in a dramatic divine intervention, but how does this compare to other faiths? Next, we explore the end times in Islam, a faith with a vivid eschatological doctrine. In Islamic theology, the end times, or eschatology, is a topic of great significance and depth. It is steeped in symbolism and metaphysical concepts that paint a vivid picture of the world's final days. One of the key aspects of the Islamic view of the end times is the signs of the last day. These signs are categorized into two, minor and major. Minor signs are those that have occurred and continue to occur since the time of Prophet Muhammad, such as widespread injustice and the loss of trust. Major signs, on the other hand, are dramatic events that will unfold closer to the last day, including the appearance of the Antichrist, the return of Jesus, and the rising of the sun from the West. Beyond these signs, Islamic eschatology also speaks of the coming of a figure known as the Mahdi. This individual, whose name means guided one, is expected to unite Muslims and bring justice to the world prior to the day of judgment. The Mahdi, according to various hadiths, will rule for seven, nine, or nineteen years before the arrival of the Day of Judgment. And then there is the Day of Judgment itself, a pivotal event in Islamic eschatology. Every individual, regardless of their faith or lack thereof, will stand before God and be held accountable for their actions in life. This day is described as lasting fifty thousand years, with the sun brought near to mankind. It's a solemn moment of reckoning where deeds are weighed and eternal destinations are decided. In Islam, eschatology serves as a reminder of the transient nature of life and the ultimate accountability before God. It is a vivid and detailed tapestry of events that are expected to unfold as the world draws to its close. In Islam, we find a detailed timeline of events, but how does this contrast with other religions? Now let's delve into Hinduism a religion with a cyclical concept of time. Unlike the linear perspective of time in many Western religions, Hinduism embraces a cyclical view, 
where time is perceived as a wheel endlessly spinning through four distinct epochs or yugas. These yugas, namely Satya, Treta, Dvapara and Kali, represent the progressive decline in morality, virtue and righteousness. The final age, the Kali Yuga, is often referred to as the age of darkness and ignorance, where ethical and moral values deteriorate and strife and discord become commonplace. Now let's talk about this Kali Yuga, the age we're said to be living in right now. It is believed to be an era of spiritual degradation, where materialism overshadows virtue and falsehood overpowers truth. While this might sound grim, it's not all doom and gloom. In fact, the Kali Yuga is also seen as a time of great potential for spiritual growth. Amidst the chaos and confusion, individuals are provided with the opportunity to rise above the materialistic world, achieving liberation or moksha, the ultimate goal in Hinduism. So what happens when the Kali Yuga ends? Does the world cease to exist? Not quite. In Hinduism, the end of an age doesn't signify absolute annihilation. Instead, it marks the transition from one yuga to the next. As the Kali Yuga concludes, a period of great upheaval and transformation ensues, eventually giving way to a new Satya Yuga, an era of truth, righteousness and virtue. This cyclical aspect of time in Hinduism offers a different perspective on the concept of the end times. Rather than a final judgment or cataclysmic event, the end is seen as a necessary stage of renewal and rebirth, it's a time of transition, a shift from one age to the next, where the old gives way to the new. In Hinduism, the end is merely a prelude to a new beginning, but how does this diverge from other faiths? As we've seen, the end times are depicted differently across religions. Christianity, for instance, paints a vivid picture of the apocalypse, complete with the second coming of Christ, the final judgment, and a new heaven and earth. This narrative, woven with foreboding yet hopeful threads, echoes the cyclical nature of life, death, and resurrection. On the other hand, Islam foresees a time of great upheaval, the appearance of the Mahdi, and the return of Jesus. This panorama of the end times is imbued with a sense of justice, recompense, and divine intervention, striking a chord with the concept of moral accountability. Meanwhile, Hinduism presents an intriguing cyclic perspective, where the world undergoes endless cycles of creation, preservation, and destruction. The end times, or the Kali Yuga, signify a period of moral decay, eventually leading to a grand dissolution before the cycle recommences. This cyclical view underscores the impermanence and transience of the world. Despite their differences, these views share common themes, a transformative period, divine intervention, moral reckoning, and a new beginning. These narratives, as diverse as they are, reflect our collective quest for understanding, our grappling with the unknown, and our innate desire for renewal and redemption. In the realm of theology, the end times remain a captivating subject, reflecting the diversity and richness of human beliefs. So what do you think the end of the world looks like?